What is up guys, Stark here. In today's character spotlight, I am taking a look at Billy the Kid. So Billy the Kid is a three-star server that came out with the uh, America Singularity, and he's a pretty cool character. He's a freaking cowboy, so obviously he's going to be pretty cool. Unfortunately, though, he is a three-star servant, so he's not really the best character there is, but he is pretty good, and he is amazing at doing crit damage. So as I said, he is a three-star archer, so he will go up to level 70, and at level 70, he will have 9,506 HP and 6,890 attack. So this will rank him 76th overall in HP and 78th overall in attack. So he's got pretty balanced stats, however he is a 3 star so that balance is, you know, more towards the end of the list than I would have liked, but you know, 3 stars don't have that good of stats to begin with. So unfortunately he is stuck near the bottom of the tier list here. If you do decide to max him out he will end up with 14,889 HP and 11,325 attack. So moving on here to his servant skills. He's got a pretty solid set of skills, they're pretty much focused on one thing and one thing only, and that is to increase the amount of critical damage he will be dealing. So Billy the Kid has the single highest amount of crit damage you can stack based on the skills that character can use alone, and you know that's at 162% is how high he can go up in damage. Obviously you can make that higher than that with craft essences and other skills and noble phantasms and things like that, but if you just look at it at the base, I believe he does have the highest amount of crit damage you can generate on his own. So for his skills, his first skill is the Marksmanship A++. Now this will increase his critical strength for one turn. So this is a self buff that does exactly what it sounds and that increases the critical strength and it is a huge, insane, enormous buff to his crit damage. It starts out at 60% but it goes all the way up to 120% level 10. So if you are planning on using Billy the Kid, this is a must max, instant max skill for you to you know work on next up here is his second skill which is going to be the quick draw a plus this will increase his normal phantasm gauge so this will start at 30 percent level one goes all the way up to 50 percent at level 10 there's not much else to talk about here on this skill it's just going to increase his normal phantasm gauge which is really nice because you can combo it with his crit damage and all that so ideally you want to use his big moves with the crit on his normal phantasm to do even more damage so having a second skill here that can increase his gauge by 50% right off the bat is always really nice to have. So moving on here to his third and final skill, this is going to be the Mind's Eye C. This will apply evasion for one turn as well as increase his critical strength for three turns. So unfortunately this is a little bit less than his marksmanship skill, however it does last for three turns and it does start at 16% level 1, goes up to 32% at level 10, and this does stack with his first skill. So, you know, you're going to end up with 152% if you do decide to use them both on the same turn, which by all rights you should be doing. You should be using his first and second skill, you know, together. Um, if you use his third skill first, obviously you might not use his first skill until like the second or third turn, but you definitely want to use both of them during the duration of the Mind's Eyes skill. So moving on here to his class skills, he does have two, the first one being the Independent Action A, which will increase his critical strength by 10%. So you do get a 10% addition here to your crit strength, and it already has an insane amount, the highest in the game, so that just makes it even higher, which is really nice. And then his second one is the Writing C+, which will increase quick card effectiveness by 7%. So now moving on here to his Ascension. For his first Ascension, he's going to need 4 Archer pieces and 30,000 Quantum pieces. For his second Ascension, he's going to need 8 Archer pieces, 5 Meteor Horseshoes, and 100,000 quantum pieces. For his third ascension, he's going to need four archer monuments, 20 evil bones, three phoenix feathers, and 300,000 quantum pieces. And then for his final ascension, he's going to need eight archer monuments, six phoenix feathers, and five claws of chaos, as well as 900,000 quantum pieces. And then for his skills, the level of skill up from one to 10, you're going to need 12 gems of the archer, 12 magic gems of the archer, 12 secret gems of the archer, 30 evil bones, 11 meteor horseshoes, 32 void dusts, 10 teardrops of blood, 1 crystallized lore, and 13,600,000 quantum pieces. So now for his command cards and his normal phantasm. First up for the command cards, he does have 2 quick, 2 arts, and 1 buster. So he's got a little bit of a balanced deck here, however, I would have definitely have preferred him to have 3 quick. He's basically generated around doing crit damage, so why not give him three 
quick so he can do a normal quick chain. Uh, his normal phantasm is fortunately quick and so you can still do the chains there to get the more stars but it does a little bit less when you're using your normal phantasm and then getting that quick chain off so you can't make use of the stars that turn but you can still make use of them later on in the fight and like I said his normal phantasm is quick and it's going to deal significant damage to a single enemy and it will also ignore evasion for one turn and then on the overcharge it will decrease critical hit rates for three turns to that single enemy if they sh if they survive you're gonna do a ton of damage and ideally you're going to burst with your skills so there's a good chance the enemy won't die unless it's like a you know servant boss or something like that but you know it's <laughs> it's a pretty solid noble phantasm overall you can do a rank up quest to further power the amount of damage that this noble phantasm does as well as increase the uh, decrease for the critical hit rate overall it's nothing special it's just going to be doing a bit of damage here and the idea is to combo it with this crits to make it do even more damage so now moving on to the craft essences for this character. First up is his level 10 bond, and fittingly this is going to be the gun sided craft essence, which will increase critical strength for all allies by 25% while on the field. So of course he's going to get a crit strength craft essence to keep, you know, that insane amount of damage even higher. So it's not a bad choice, but there are other options if you do, you know, decide to want to go that route, or if you just don't have his bond maxed out. Uh, you could go with the Gander for the quick card effectiveness increase or a Imaginary Around for the 25% increase. You could also go with the Knight's Dignity Craft Essence. Now this is a very good one because obviously it increases his critical damage by either 40 or 50% depending on the limit break status. And you know just combo that with his skills, you're going to get an insane number of crit damage. Yeah you could crack 200% if you use this Craft Essence with it. So that's definitely something worth considering. You know, there is that reduced defense, but you do have an evasion skill that can kind of get around that. So overall, it's not a bad option to use. Another really good craft essence that you could use, now not everyone's going to have this craft essence, but if you do have it, it is a good option to use. And that is going to be the Teacher and I craft essence. Now this will let you start the battle with your Noble Phantasm gauge at 50%, and it also increases your star absorption rate by 300%. So Billy the Kid has a pretty solid, you know, star rate to begin with, but this will just increase it even further, making sure that he gets most of, if not all of the stars when, you know, you get them and it definitely, he definitely wants stars because he's centered around doing crit damage. So the higher absorption rate you can get with this character, the better. And the more stars you get, obviously the more damage you're going to be dealing with his crits. So, you know, why not maximize that to its fullest potential? So then moving on to the character in review portion. So first up, some of the servants that you could use on this character, uh, I do have Hans as the first servant recommended. He's a pretty solid option, you can use his skills to increase the critical damage of Billy. So obviously, you know, any, any character that can do the crit strength increase or has a skill for it is going to be a good option to use with him. So at level 10 you could do a 40% increase to his crit damage, as well as all your other allies as well. So it's not just a single target skill, which is really nice. And then he does have his third skill which will increase critical stars and then you could just use those stars for Billy to you know absorb and do his crit damage and all that fun stuff. And he does have a Noble Phantasm that has a chance to increase the attack. So if you do get that off that's just an extra bonus on top of his already good skills for Billy. Next up is going to be Waver. Um, obviously Waver's here. He's on pretty much every one of these recommended servants. He's just that good, he's that versatile, you, you know, all of his skills are really good, you're gonna help the Noble Phantasm gain, increase his attack, increase his defense, and his first skill will increase the critical strength as well. So, like I said, anything, anybody that can do crit damage increase is going to be an amazing ally for Billy the Kid. And you can get a 50% increase with Waver, uh, it is just for a single, single ally instead of all the allies, but you also are increasing the Noble Phantasm gauge as well. So combo his skills with Billy's skills and you can get like ridiculous numbers, you can get his Noble Phantasm gauge filled on the first turn if you want. So overall it's just a good combination. Another good combination here is going to be uh, Julius Caesar. All three of his skills can benefit Billy. You can use the first skill for Noble Phantasm, the second skill for his attack, and the third skill for his crit strength. So all three of these you can just do like a one turn, like a huge nuke. Um, obviously it's probably not going to be that beneficial in the long run, but 
you know, if you do need some like a huge nuke on a single enemy or something, this might be a pretty solid combination to use. And then with the uh, rank up quest, you can also benefit from increasing his star drop rate. Now he doesn't really have that good of a star drop rate to begin with, so having that, you know, an increase to the star drop rate as well as increasing his critical strength. And then finally, I have Bride Nero. So she doesn't increase his critical strength, but honestly he doesn't really need that much increase to critical strength. So instead I focused on um, increasing his critical star drop rate, which she definitely does with her second skill, increasing his attack and his star drop rate by 50% for that. So like I said previously, he does lack that you know, pretty substan substantially. So having a skill that can increase it, and then you also have a skill that can increase his normal phantasm gauge and heal him if he need be. So now for his star rankings, first up is going to be his stats. Obviously him being a 3 star, he's not going to have that much of you know really high stats. So overall I'm going to give him a 1.7 in that. And then for his skills, he does have really solid skills, granting him the highest crit strength skills in the game. So I'm going to give him a 3 star for that. He does also have some evasion there, and a second skill that can increase his normal phantasm gauge by 50%. So overall he's got a very good kit of skills. So 3 stars. Next up for his Noble Phantasm, uh, it's just kind of an average Noble Phantasm. It's going to do a lot of damage. Uh, it's heavily dependent on his skills though, trying to get that crit off to do extra damage. But overall there's not much else there. It does have a little bit of a debuff, but overall it's a very bland, very average Noble Phantasm, so 2.5 stars. And then for his survivability, he's also going to get 2.5 stars here. He does have that one turn evasion skill. He has a 3 star though, and he doesn't have that much HP to begin with. So outside of that one turn, he's probably going to go down really fast. So I can't give him too much more as far as stars for his survivability. And then for his versatility, you know, he's not really that versatile, honestly. He can't combo into too many teams. Most of the times you're using characters to support him and make his good stats better or make, you know, a servant that will increase one of his weaker stats. So he doesn't really add too much into another team, you just have to focus on supporting him. So he does lose a lot of points there because you need to focus on the support around him rather than having him support somebody else. So he is only going to get a 2 star in versatility. And overall that will give him a 2.3 out of 5. So that's about going to wrap up this video here guys. Um, I have recorded a lot of the other spotlights and I have all the characters done except for one and that is going to be Lee Shuen. I, this is probably like the rarest character in the game for me. I've not seen this character. Maybe I've only seen him one time. I should have just recorded the video right, right then and there. I didn't think he would vanish. Uh, so if you are that one person on my friends list who has him, please put him back up. He is the only character currently in the game that I need. I have all the other stuff recorded. I just have to edit it and put it up and make like the video like actually like put it together as a video. So look forward to that. I will be away in a convention. I'm going to Zenkai Con. If anyone knows what that is, I'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all three days. So I don't know if I'll have videos up. I'm going to try really hard to pre-upload them and just schedule them for those dates. So there's still something there, even though I'm not going to be home. If not, I do apologize. But when I come back on Monday, I will, you know, get back to uploading. And like I said, I do have a ton of other videos planned after I finish these spotlights. So stay tuned for that. And again, guys, um, link's going to be in the description below for my Twitter, Twitch, Discord, Patreon, all that fun stuff. So if you want to hang out, just go to one of those links, you know, I'm always in there for Discord. Even if I'm not actually talking, I'm pretty much always in there, either on my computer or on my phone. So don't hesitate to drop by and say hi. And I think that about wraps up this video. I will leave you guys here with Billy's Noel Phantasm, and I'll see you guys next time.